Hi there guys, how are you doing? This is your friend and tutor Manas and in this video I am going to show you how the sectioning of a hexagonal prism can be carried out when one of its rectangular faces is in absolute contact with the horizontal plane or you can also say that one of its rectangular faces is on ground. Okay, so let's see what the problem has in store. Here we go. A hexagonal prism has a face on the HP and the axis is parallel to VP. It is cut by a vertical section plane that is an auxiliary vertical plane AVP. All right. The HD of which that is the horizontal trace of which makes an angle of 45 degrees with XY line and which cuts the axis at a point 20 mm from one of its ends. Draw its sectional front view and true shape of the section side of the base 25 mm long and height 65 mm. You can also say that this is the axis length. All right. Now let's go ahead and write down the details. Object obviously is a hexagonal prism. Dimensions are 25 mm long basage. Axis length has been taken as 65. Um, what more condition? Okay, so there is this condition face on the HP. So out of these six rectangular faces, just think about this. This what you call hexagonal prism has as many as six rectangular faces, and there is one such face which is grounded or which is in absolute contact with the horizontal plane. Okay, so that is something which should reflect uh, perfectly in your drawing. All right. Now let's see what else has been given to us. Cutting plane details. So we have this AVP auxiliary vertical plane and it intersects the axis 10 mm from the axis top end. All right guys, so that was all about the given data as far as problem is concerned. And in the next section, I'll show you how the object has been really kept. Where exactly do we have this cutting plane? How does the object look after it is being cut from the front, from the top? All right, so let's go ahead and see. So guys, this is the hexagonal prism that I was talking about. And if you want to see this portion, which is in contact with the HP, it is this one. Okay. So this rectangular face is in contact with the horizontal plane. So it is resting in this way. And when you try to look at this object from the front, you're going to see this, this, all right. And when you're going to see it from the top, it's going to look like this. Let me show you how that's it. Now, what we are supposed to do is we have to cut this. Okay. And let me show you how that can be done something like this yeah pretty good let me show you how exactly this can be done uh, there you go there you go yeah so this cutting plane and that i'm talking about this is what you call the auxiliary vertical plane all right now this cutting plane is such that it is um, what do you call perpendicular to the horizontal plane and inclined at an angle of say five with the vertical plane so this angle has been given to us as 45 degrees all right and when you try to look at this entire scenario from the top, it's going to look something like this. Okay. And if you want to have a front view of this, this is the uh, sectional front view that you're going to see. And if you, when you want to have the true shape of this section, you're going to have to see this object from over here. Let me show you from over here. All right. And then you're going to see this true shape. All right. So this was all about how the cutting plane has been placed and we'll now go ahead and make the construction. But there is something else that I need to tell you guys. Okay, so let's see that in the next section. So guys, this is the hexagonal prism that I was talking about and it has a height of 65 millimeters. The base edge is, base edge is 25 millimeters long. And as far as the condition is concerned, we have been said that one of its rectangular faces is in absolute contact with the ground. Okay, so you can also assume that this, um, this would look as if it's sleeping on the horizontal plane. Okay, so initially in step number one, we'll make sure that it's standing something like this and we're going to create its front view this one all right and then we're going to create its top view something like this after this is done step two is pretty simple we only have to recreate the front view making sure that one of its rectangular faces is in absolute contact with that x y line okay or with the horizontal plane so let's go ahead and do that yeah so guys we've now arrived at the business portion for this particular problem so let's draw so we're going to kick off by making an XY line. All right. And we know that very well that right now in step number one, we're going to assume that this hexagonal prism is standing. Okay. Or resting with its space on HP and hence the true shape of its space, which is actually hexagonal in shape can only be seen from the top. And hence we're going to start by making our top view first. Okay. So when you speak of a hexagonal prism, it is going to have six corners at the bottom and six corners at the top. Okay. So let's say that the bottom six corners are represented by one, two, three, four, five, six. 
where is the top six corners are represented by numbers from seven to twelve okay like this let me show you exactly so over here we have a vertical edge in the form of one seven here we have a vertical edge again of two eight and so on now we're going to create its corresponding front view and for that we have to look at this object from over here right so let's have the project aligns so these points correspond to let me show you the bottom portion is one two one two six whereas the topmost portion or the topmost hexagon having corners are from 7 to 12 so that's why i've written one is over here one two this is going to be three dash comma six dash this is going to be four dash comma five dash similarly we're going to have an hexagon above also which appears as a straight line over here also and it's going to have points in the form of seven eight or nine twelve and ten eleven we're going to see that okay so let's darken this portion this is the bottom hexagon that i'm talking about now let's go ahead upstairs by an amount of 65 millimeters okay this is going to be 65 let me show you and top hexagon as i've already said 7 dash comma 8 dash 7 dash comma 8 dash 9 dash comma 12 dash yeah 10 dash and 11 dash there you go this is going to be 65 all right guys so the first step is over the hexagonal prism was assumed as standing on the horizontal plane so guys in the next step what we're going to do is we're going to push this hexagonal prism until it falls on this rectangular face so this rectangular face is 4 5 10 11 all right four corners obviously so what what i'll do is i'll make a point over here let's say this point is 4 dash comma 5 dash and with this line okay keep your compass over here the two legs of your compass one over here the other over here with this guy a center put an arc and this is going to be your point 10 comma 11 so what happened basically is this line will be overlapping with this xy line which is a clear indication that the rectangular face is in absolute contact with the horizontal plane so don't get confused because it appears as a line because in such a view the rectangular face in fact is appearing as a line all right so we'll now go ahead and uh, make this remaining portion this line you see this line you see and this line you see something like this all right now let's name the remaining points okay let's do that quickly so 1 dash comma 2 dash okay 7 dash comma 8 dash over here and this is going to be 3 dash comma 6 dash and 9 dash comma 12 dash let's see what else can be done now we'll go ahead and make the corresponding top view for this that's it so you can now find the intersection points let's say we want to find the intersection point 6 okay so this is 6 dash and where is 6 this is 6 so this line and this line this is the intersection point and hence this is 6 suppose you want point 7 okay so this is the horizontal for 7 and this is the vertical from for 7 both of them are going to intersect over here okay so this is going to be point 7 and similarly all the remaining points can be worked out pretty easily now let's have the axis also so this is the top end okay this is the top end from 7 to 12 okay and this is the bottom end from 1 to 6 from 1 to 6 so we've made the axis and somewhere along this axis guys is a point at a distance of 20 millimeters from the top end from over here let's make a point this distance 20 millimeters you're going to see an auxiliary vertical plane an auxiliary plane is something which is perpendicular to the hp and inclined at an angle phi with the vertical plane okay the angle which it's making is 45 degrees in fact so here it is this is the auxiliary vertical plane okay or you can also say that it's a horizontal trace of that particular plane or this cutting plane okay so angle is going to be 45 degrees now let's have the cutting points so guys we have this edge over here 3 9 edge intersected by this cutting plane over here so let's say this is point a and you, you see this there are two edges one at the top that is 2 8 edge and the other edge at the bottom that is 4 10 4 10 edge so there are going to be two intersection points one is going to be b other one is going to be c similarly when you move ahead towards this edge over here it appears as a single edge but in fact there are two edges both of them are overlapping one is 1 7 while the edge below is 5 11 1 7 and 5 11 so for two edges we're going to have two intersection points and hence d and e similarly when you move forward you're going to have two intersection points here also okay now it's g and f let me tell you what those points are one intersection point is going to be at the top okay from between 12 and 7 so between 12 and 7 there is going to be an intersection point and between 12 and 11 there is again going to be an intersection point all right now let's move ahead let's have these points as front view 
let's do that quickly so 3 9 this is a where is 3 9 3 dash 9 dash this is gonna be a dash that's it 2 8 all right so this is gonna be b dash for you all right so b dash is between 4 and 10 all right guys 4 dash and 10 dash and this is gonna be between 2 and 8 similarly you can have the intersection for this d and e also this is gonna be d all right this is gonna be e but the biggest confusion right now is to locate the front view of this intersection point that is g and f if you try to draw a line from over here it does not intersect any line rather it overlaps so what needs to be done is you need to move in the leftward direction something like this so there is an intersection point over here between 12 and 11 12 and 11 12 and 11 also there is an intersection point between 12 and 7 12 and 7 over here so we're going to extend lines from these two intersection points until they reach the top so this is going to be point g dash this is going to be point f dash now the next step is pretty simple you can keep the two legs of your compass one over here other over here with this as the center put an arc so that you have this point in the form of g dash similarly you need to repeat this process let's uh, keep one leg over here other leg over here with this as the center put an arc that's point f dash now let's join all of them let's darken the portion rather that's remaining okay yeah, there you go all right guys now this is the remaining portion and from here the cutting plane starts making its contact and it ends over here so this is the portion which needs to be hatched and it's going to look something like this pretty good pretty good so the sectional front view is done sectional top view is done we'll now go ahead and make the true shape of the section for making the true shape of the section you have to look at the object from over here okay please see where the mouse is hovering and for that i have to place a mirror something like this so this is the mirror or the auxiliary plane that i'm talking about all right let's have perpendicular lines from all these intersection points how many are there one two three four five six seven okay so all these seven intersection points are gonna fall somewhere along these lines so this line is for a this is for b and c and so on now let us say we want to make uh, the true shape over here and we need the corresponding points somewhere along these lines over here so what we're going to do is we, can, we are making the true shape from the top view and hence the distances that we need to pick is going to be from the front view so the distances that we're going to pick is going to be with reference line xy and the distances that we're going to put up is going to be with reference line x1 y1 listen to that once again the distances that we're going to pick up is with respect to this xy line okay let's say we want to plot a dash so we'll keep one leg over here other leg over here okay then with this guy as the center i'm going to put an arc and this is going to be point a all right then let's say we want to put up point b so the point b is exactly lying on this xy line okay so let's move downward downward so it's going to lie on this x1 y1 line all right at zero distance you can say so this is going to be point b similarly let's say we want point c keep one leg of your compass here other leg over here then come downwards along this direction with this guy as the center put an arc and that's point c so guys similarly all the remaining points can be worked out it's it's pretty easy and that's the true shape of the section and when you join all the points you're gonna have something like this and this is the true shape of the section and section has to be hatched that's it so guys that was all from my side if you have any doubts or queries do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and guys over the next few days i'll be posting more problems based on section of solids so stay tuned until then it's a wrap for today this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a great day and keep drawing